Famous art? What do you want? Famous? I'm not gonna. Don't you are the famous LA art. Turn the L.A. art community is a tough area for a newcomer to break into. News 13's Sylvia Lopez shows us what it takes to make it in the local art scene. 28-year-old Anthony Osgang is not your typical struggling artist. For one thing, he eats well. He's got a regular art-related job. He has some pieces on display at the County Art Museum, and he just sold a painting. But he'd like to sell more. I've always felt that money is actually the most sincere form of flattery for somebody to be willing to buy your work is a great compliment to me osgang calls his style of art cartoon mayhem but thousands of la artists would probably use that term to describe their lifestyles given the hardship involved in becoming a well-known artist osgang has taken to painting movie set graffiti to supplement his income he says it's not exactly an artist's dream but in this town it's money Still ahead on News 13, the Rudolph Hess story doesn't end yet. We will tell you about it when we come back. Why did you decide to show my work at your gallery? Because you get so many artists coming to you with their portfolios and uh -huh. people coming all the time. Why, why did you decide that you even wanted to deal art? As an art dealer, you get submissions every day from people wanting to show their art. Lowbrow. I'd like to stick with people whose art that I've bought myself in the past. I'm not really showing art for the money or you know trying to pick artists that particularly sell a lot. I'm trying to pick artists that I really like. Anthony knows what he's doing and he's got his direction. He's been doing it for a hell of a long time. I think he's going to go to Bar Sinister. Oh, really? We're alternative artists and yet there existed an alternative support network. People buying art and there were a few galleries. That's interesting what, you, what you're saying is it gave the movement time to mature. It was a great scene because there was a lot of help between, you know, like every break I ever got as an artist came from other artists. From people like Anthony and a bunch of other people saying, hey, this guy's work is good. You should, hey, you gallery guy, you should look at Van Arno. He's great. Yeah, the whole show isn't going to take very much space. How many pieces you taken? Ten. How big's the gallery? Pretty good size, man. Ben's got 10. I, I, I like to paint, to paint the archetypical moment that Anthony talks about and that clowns talk about. But uh, I like to do it with a much more traditional sort of a figurative fine art painting sort of thing in there, but there's a cartoon influence in my work too. The shooting gallery? It's going to be crazy, man. I hope. It's a different market, you know? It's more street culture. cash in my pocket, no, going there knowing I wanted to buy uh, an Osgang. I think I actually have four or five of Anthony's paintings now. Yeah, so he was, he was the first artist I ever bought art from. 20 bucks each. Who's the band, man? Who cares? So how do you, I don't know how you want to cut it, 50-50 or? Sounds good to me. It's okay with you? Oh yeah, man, yeah, 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 of course. Because that way people want to buy both of them. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm an art gallery owner, it's the investment for me, but it's still uh, just uh, a get, for me it's like getting a fix. Lowbrow, it has to do with hot rods and pinup chicks. Other than that, I don't think it's lowbrow. And I'm not really too happy with the term lowbrow to begin with because I know what highbrow means, so that, you know, therefore I know what lowbrow insinuates. And, I'm not, I don't think that's the case at all. Oh, like, like that, yeah. 
I just show what I like and what I think I can sell. Yeah. I was smoking around this. Yeah, that's smoking with uh, one double bag in it. Right. We, we come, come right, right down, down to it. Really, I'm trying, trying to make, make some, some money, money here. here. I don't have any, I don't have any deep philosophical reasons about why I do the fucking artwork. I do them because that's what people want me to do, and that's what keeps me occupied with. Yeah, okay, the message, blah, 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 the human condition as put forth in non-human terms would be, that's the message. Yeah. Shit, shit, shit! Sell them and make the money. You can make more. You can even paint the same one again if you, if you miss it so fucking bad. <laughs> I was thinking about when I was just happy to have a show, that was enough, and I had no expectations of selling. I was just gratified to be in a show, and now I'm at this point where a show is about making money. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Unveiled a painting for five hundred thousand dollars. Holy moly! It's a it's a the Pasadena Arts Center. Uh, yeah, Pasadena Arts Center. And, he, and once upon a time, when paintings before TV and film paintings, when would have these extravagant debuts, they would actually set up up on an auditorium on the stage. People would pay to sit in the audience, and then they'd have this slow unveiling of painting. I don't have any money. So, tell me what you're doing now. I just came off a show in San Francisco at the shooting gallery, and that was pretty successful. I've sold three paintings of that show so far. Nice. One of them was to a big executive at Warner Brothers. That was pretty surprising. See? See, kids, there is money in art. There can be money, but the thing is, I do have to split the take with the dealer. Of course, It's 50-50. Yeah. They deserve it, actually, I think, since they have their space. Right, and they have rent it. to pay and everything else. Mm -hmm. It's true. Do most artists have um, a good relationship with galleries? 